Now this video uh, shows my setup for uh, grinding the flutes of uh, of reamers. Now um, I had one or two reamers with some tiny little nicks uh, on the OD on the edge of the uh, land, and the result of these tiny little nicks um, it makes the the bow when it's reamed a series of uh, concentric scores. It's not very good. Uh, so what I've uh, decided to do is just uh, grind the reamer uh, floats and polish out these tiny little nicks. Now this particular reamer is uh, um, a, a mill type. It's been milled left uh, in the rough state really, although it's uh, a well-known make reamer. It really does pay to be able to polish uh, the floats on reamers because it does help to, uh, to leave a better finish. And as I say, if you've got a tiny little... Uh, uh, nick or damage to it, it just uh, by polishing these these out it does uh, improve the reamer. Here we see the wheel which is beveled and angled over to match the um, the angle of the the reamer. Now the angle of the wheel has got to match the uh, face of the uh, flute. It's got um, it's it's got really to be. Uh, moved over slightly either forwards or backwards on the cross slide so that it does not touch on the uh, top of the float or at the bottom but it has to be equal and you can tell when it's equal by taking a trial cut and the the grinding mark will be equal uh, sometimes on uh, milled reamers like this you'll get it touching uh, in the bottom and the top at the same time but leave a tends to leave a gap in the middle where the milling cutter which uh, was used to mill the reamer has, uh, has, has not been uh, properly square. Here you can see how the uh, the wheel uh, fits up against the uh, face of the flute and it's tending to touch on the uh, the top of the uh, cutting edge so it, it means that the cross slide will have to be moved slightly forward so that it evens up this, uh, this video is not intended as a tutorial, it just really shows you uh, the method I use to uh, to grind and polish flutes on uh, on my reamers. Uh, we used to use this method when I was uh, in the tool making and it was uh, it, it was always uh, done when it reamers came in for, for finishing. They were always hand ground on the flutes uh, at the company I work for. And sometimes uh, a very, very high polish was required by... Uh, by some of the uh, customers, especially Fords. It's important to get the wheel in the right position and the bevel uh, matching the front uh, of the float. And then it's just a matter of uh, of touching on and you can instantly see uh, where the uh, where the wheel is, um, is grinding on the face of the uh, float. And necessary adjustments can be made then by moving the cross slide slightly backwards or forwards and uh, and even just slightly raising the wheel it's really just a knack and the I idea is that as you uh, enter the float with the wheel you just slightly move the um, the the front too so it just clears the wheel and touches on just beyond the uh, the cutting edge and it's just a matter of feel then you can feel and then the uh, the float is uh, the front of the float is is ground, and it's just slight pressure between your finger and thumb, and uh, and that, that's that's the way to do it. As you're coming off uh, the end of the uh, reamer, the, the where the bevel is, you just slightly release it and just ever so slightly move the uh, float away from the uh, wheel. And normally when you approach the end of the river where the, uh, the cutting edge is, where the bevel is, I normally pause uh, in the centre of the wheel there and just uh, move the table ever so slightly, just, just polish that uh, area. It's got to be in the middle of the wheel. If you uh, go past it by and holding, uh, holding pressure on the wheel, it will... It will um, will uh, tend to roll the edge over where the um, the 45 degree bevel is um, and this will uh, will not uh, do the uh, cutting edge any good you must 
uh, you must stop uh, in the middle of the wheel and just just um, put gentle pressure on and just grind the uh, the edge. And as you come off, just release pressure so that the wheel clears the uh, end of the the flute. It's also important to have one of the centres modified with a flap to give clearance uh, to the wheel when it comes off the float. As you can see here, the, um, the centre has, has been ground away. And, uh, and also the rear stop set so that uh, the wheel doesn't go uh, travel beyond the uh, rear of the float. If you didn't have a stop set here, um, the results could be disastrous. And here you can see uh, the wheel being paused slightly at the end of the float so as not to uh, create a rolled edge. And by the way, I've omitted the, uh, the full wheel guard. Uh, I've done this for the sake of parity so you can see what uh, what, uh, what exactly is going on. Well, that's cleaned up reasonable. There's still uh, um, bits in the middle of the float which uh, hasn't been cleaned up, and that's due to the way it's been milled, as I mentioned before. But uh, it has actually got the, uh, the tiny little uh, nick out. That uh, that should uh, should do the job. The next thing to do now is to regrind the uh, the cutting angles at the end of the reamer. These are at 45 degrees, and it's these to do the actual cutting of the reamer. Well, here's a, a closer up view of the uh, the floats now that they've been uh, ground and polished. Not too bad, and there's no. Um, there's no rolled edge uh, at the end of the flute. There is some tiny marks where the wheel has actually started uh, its traverse into the flute, but that's unavoidable. It's just on the uh, the corners there, which won't make the slightest bit of difference. And definitely no no nicks there now. You can really stone them, as I mentioned before, but stoning, uh, I don't know, it seems just doesn't seem to do as good a job as uh, polishing the flute. Now, this is a general view of the setup which I use to uh, to do the uh, the angles on the end of the reamer. This is a spring-loaded tooth rest uh, made from an old saw blade. Uh, the, the teeth are set uh, on uh, horizontal. And then um, the um, the tooth rest is then just placed just slightly uh, inside from the edge of the um, of the bevel. 
And the method I'm going to use is just by eye. I'm I'm going to just touch on what's already on the uh, on the uh, angle of the uh, 45 degrees. Now you can use the uh, the technical way, which uh, I've mentioned before, where you um, multiply the relief angle of the ream or the angle what you're going to grind by the uh, diameter of the wheel and then multiply by 0.0087 but I, I don't really find it necessary and just I'm just matching what's already on and this will be adequate when you set the tooth rest up uh, it, it really needs to be uh, in the correct position not too far forward and not too far backwards so that when you index round it's firm, there's, uh, there's no movement. You can easily tell that as you index uh, round each flute, it's, it, it feels solid. There's no, um, there's no flex. Yet, with it being um, an old blade, it, you can index it quite easily. The, the blade will spring. I do plan to make an adjustable height um, tooth rest with uh, a micrometer head which is normally used in tool and cutter grinding in industry and these are quite useful and uh, they can be very uh, very useful when you're uh, grinding a particular accurate angles I'm just now uh, checking the uh, the clearance the uh, the fall off from the front of the cutting edge to the rear and this is okay each tooth is clear And that's good to go. doing now is uh, turning a piece of mild steel down and I'm going to drill and, uh, and reamer it and see what uh, what type of uh, finish I now get. times I've seen people uh, centre drilling on, uh, on the lathe and just go straight in with the centre drill and never think about withdrawing it uh, bit by bit to make sure that the, uh, the chips are clear and they wonder why the small tip breaks off. You should always nibble uh, a centre roll, go in and then come out, go in and come out, make sure that uh, there's no build up of chips. Uh, centre drills can be um, can be easily broken, and if uh, you're using um, quality centre drill, they can be quite expensive. Just spraying the uh, the bore with some uh, cutting compound. I've, uh, I've dropped the speed down quite a lot. You don't want to be reaming at the the same RPM as you uh, as you do your drilling. It won't do the reamer any. Anyway. Just take it nice and steady through. There are on uh, some occasions when I'm reaming uh, small holes. I just push the whole tailstock uh, forward and the reamer uh, behaves like a, a floating reamer and this does produce uh, quite good results well that's uh, certainly an improvement on the uh, 
on the uh, finish. I really ought to have uh, uh, done this uh, drilling and reaming with the reamer prior to uh, to reconditioning it when it showed the concentric rings in the bore. Hope you found it of interest and thanks for watching.